Someone once said, volunteering is not a choice, it's a responsibility. My love affair with the lake started a long time ago. I was born in Lithgow and in the midst of the Great Depression in 1932, the family moved to the Port Gemba area. I grew up in Kunjilla, next door to the Steelworks, and then when I got my first push bike, it was over the top of Flagstaff Hill, I discovered Lake Illawarra, and then spent a lot of time at the lake. In the mid-40s, I was serving my time as an apprentice fitter and turner, and because a friend and I were pretty handy, we built kayaks out of striped canvas and timber, and kept most of the water out with coats of house paint. We used to spend every weekend out on the lake, and camp on Gooseberry Island, where there was still the shell of an old dance hall that had been built in the late 1800s. But by the 1970s there was a very large migration push to bring workers for the steelworks and the like, and of course with that came housing development, particularly in the low-lying areas around the lake, and there were no particular controls in those days. I started to see the lake I loved disappear. In the 1970s I started to talk to anybody who had listened. Something had to be done. Councils and every government department had a finger in the pie, but no one had any real responsibility. Unfortunately, the border between the Shell Harbour and Wollongong councils was right down the middle of the lake entrance. In the mid-1970s, finally, the Lake Illawarra Management Committee was formed. The meetings were good, everybody was welcome, we prepared some wonderful reports, but could do nothing on the lake to help the system because there was no budget. I served as its Honorary Secretary Convener, unpaid of course, and stayed there for the 13 year life of the committee. Eventually the Lake Illawarra Authority was formed in 1988, and uniquely under its own Act of Parliament, which gave added strength to the authority. Then we started in the process of persuading the councils to provide them money to actually do something. The government had promised monies, but it had to be matched by the councils. The first four or five years were hard work, and mostly the most frequently asked question was, when are you going to fix the entrance? And that became almost a war cry. But we knew it was going to be big dollars, and it took us 15 years before we were able to convince the councils and the government to supply the $5 million for the southern breakwater. And then only in the last couple of years to get the other $6 million required for the northern breakwater. Whatever you do, it's always going to be controversial. The beauty of it is, if you're not paid, you're never afraid of losing your job.